Hi everybody and welcome to this new PyMol tutorial series. PyMol is a powerful software for molecular viewing, editing and rendering. This series will be mostly focused on how to work with PyMol very efficiently using the command lines. In this first video we will see how to install PyMol on a Mac for free and how to load a molecule from the Protein Databank into PyMol. Outside of the academic version, which is not free, the recommended way to install PyMol on a Mac is to use a package manager called Homebrew. To do that, we want to go on the website brew.sh to copy the command line and to paste it into a terminal. To start the installation, we just have to press enter. I'm not going to do it because Homebrew is already installed on this Mac. The installation might take a couple of minutes. Once you are done with it, we can proceed to the next step, which is to install PyMol with Homebrew that we just installed. Again, here we just copy the line from the PyMol wiki, paste it into the terminal, and we run it by pressing enter. Here on my Mac it says that it's already installed, which is normal because I had it from before. The next thing we want to do is to start PyMol simply by writing PyMol into the terminal, and if everything went well, the software should start. For the last part of this tutorial, as promised, we want to load a molecule into PyMol. This is done through the command line fetch, followed by a PDB code. The common fetch works exclusively with the Protein Databank. So to find the code of the molecule that we want to load, we need to go on the Protein Databank website, which is rcsb.org. It is a great place where we can find a lot of 3D structures of biological molecules. For example, you can see the molecule of the month on the right, which is beautiful. Of course, a bunch of stuff about COVID-19 that I will talk about in the future video. But for now, let's look at the last entries and find a very simple molecule to start with. We just have to copy the code, go back on PyMol, and complete our comment with the code that we just copied. All right, that's it for this video. In the next one, we will see how to handle selections and change representations. If you are interested in seeing more PyMol tutorials, make sure to subscribe. And if there are specific things you would like me to talk about, let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.